Welcome back, welcome back to the DAP Digest. I'm your host, Brady McKenna. How's everyone doing today? Hope the answer is awesome. Hey Art, how are you doing? Let me send out a couple tweet notifications here and then we will get started. Hey, Eco, how you doing? Let's see. Why is my camera all screwed up on this scene? Oop. Ah. There you go. Earthquake. There, we should be good now. <laughs> Real busy. Bowl incoming. <laughs> That'd be groovy. Hey, Elon. How are you? So let's give everyone a couple minutes to pop in here and then we'll get started. Um, yeah, we finally got the final, 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 final designs of Stream Tide ready to go. Um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool to see it launch. I'm pretty excited. Um, I've been working through with Grifflin, kind of finalizing a few of the last little finishing touches, and uh, it's pretty cool. I've got everything that I think we need for a MVP launch, and then some. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, right now, I'm just going to continue uh, continue on with uh, the token launch now. We, uh, we're good to go with the Tide token. Uh, Tri-Roll just reached out to me yesterday. Uh, said they're gonna going to mint it today sometime and send it to my vesting wallet and then we should be good to go 
uh, from that point forward, we are uh, going to make a bunch of the try roll links and get the stream loyalty store back up and running again. So the stream points will be redeemable for tide tokens and it will be completely gas free. Uh, and I'm pretty stoked to finally get it going. Uh, no guarantees yet. Uh, depending on the traction I get with stream tide, uh, we will um, possibly use the tide token for governance if it makes sense. I've got to see what kind of traction we actually get with stream tide first and see if we even need to do those things immediately but it'll be nice to onboard some more people on twitch and get the ball rolling there anyway okay let's see eco you said you watched my video from last week looking good kind of bummed your boys didn't adopt pulse chain for meme factory yeah i mean maybe in the near future we'll see um, Pulse Chain has to prove itself though first. It has to run the gamut like everyone else and uh, get beaten and battered and battered and bashed down like everyone else and then uh, if they're left standing then everyone will build on it. <laughs> it is kind of cool that it uh, auto populates all your nfts on that chain though that'll be pretty fun to see uh, i'm more interested in pulse chain breaking things more than seeing dApps built on it to be honest i uh i kind of just want pulse chain to break stuff and that's that's my main motivator for enjoying watching the fireworks i uh i'm a big fan of the uh whole break things to create new things mod motto uh i believe that's called a shumpter's gale in economics i creative destruction <laughs> i'm a big fan but uh we'll have to see how it works out though they have to run their gamut um let's see uh let's take a look at the market really quick before we get in too much further here I've already said too much um yeah, so um, we're back up to 200 billion locked in DeFi. It is just relentless. It just keeps just jumping up there. We're about to break through the all-time high on total TLV, total locked value. Uh, this is fascinating to watch, especially considering a lot of the news uh, that we're about to talk about here in just a minute. Um, obviously, the fundamentals are stronger than ever. Uh, crypto's not going anywhere. China may have banned it, but that was actually bullish and great for crypto. So whatever, go for it. Do your thing, China. I'm glad that you're leaving the crypto anarchist sphere to its devices because, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a thing. Hey, Kyle, how are you? It's good to see you break everything weak to make things stronger indeed my body that's what we got to do that's what we got to do so let's take a quick look at the nft market before we look at the bitcoin charts um nfts obviously are still breaking new grounds we just saw toads go crazy and we've art blocks are still dominating price action it's just it's insane to see um my thesis is still the same on NFTs. I think it started a little ridiculous, and even I had my doubts about whether or not the majority of it was money laundering. But then you started seeing people doing it, quote unquote, the right way, finally. And we're starting to see a lot more of that, especially uh, my stream about art blocks, digging into how they're gamifying it and how some of the artists are really using NFTs as a uh, mechanic for gamification very directly which was pretty exciting to see because my thesis is that crypto isn't going anywhere. NFTs aren't going anywhere. And NFTs, just like that creative destruction we were just talking about, destroy a lot of narratives that are opposed to cryptocurrency gaining adoption. And a lot of the nonsense narratives that you saw building against cryptocurrency are null and void when you start talking about NFTs and artists 
and platforms that empower individual creators and take power away from centralized institutions and place it into the hands of users, creators, and people who are really trying to do something good in the world. And it's great. It is another form of creative destruction. Like it or hate it, NFTs are here to stay, and they are another form of that creative destruction. And they have become a new asset class and probably won't go away just like Bitcoin isn't going to go away. So here we are with million dollar, multi-million dollar fidenzas and all kinds of other crazy stuff. It's pretty wild to see. Hold on, I think we got some beeping going on over here. Make sure everything's closed. Yes, okay, we should be good. We shouldn't have any more beeping. Um, yeah, you said Terra Luna is growing with Avalanche and Phantom, new money being made. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of new wealth being created in crypto with very different outlooks on the world. And it's interesting to see that artists get a say in it in the whole NFT sphere. Uh, you have an entirely new economic model brewing that is like Wall Street 2.0, but transparent and in the hands of individuals rather than large institutions and banks and crony capitalist dictators posing as democratic senators and politicians. Um, yeah, I am pretty stoked for the future to say the least. Uh, anyway, cool look at the market though on in NFT land. It's still just booming. I mean, weekly NFT sales by category still up. I mean, obviously it's not up like it was, but I mean, it's still up. It's things that people are still selling stuff. People are still making an, a, a living doing this now. Artists are branching out into crypto and getting away from centralized platforms like Spotify, Patreon, blah, 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 blah. You can, you can name them all. I mean, uh, Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp all went down this week. So it's like, what are you going to do when all that goes down? Well, crypto doesn't go down. Smart contracts don't go down. Well, unless the internet goes down, but I think we're going to have bigger problems than our cryptos if the internet goes down. So that's a moot point. Um, yeah, so pretty cool to see though. Markets are still chugging right along. Solana art is killing it. Is it? Cool. I haven't actually looked at that yet. I'll have to go poke around. I think I still have some SOL coins. I guess the shit out of luck uh, meme is <laughs> not valid. I only heard that from a few people. Uh, so, yeah, let's look at the Bitcoin market. So, Bitcoin, obviously running right back up to its previous high. A lot of people thought this was going to be a bull trap. It still could be. It still could be a bull trap. I mean, we bounced off this really key level of support here. We came running right back up to here, right at this little heavy chunk of liquidity and sell pressure here. And this resistance is just heavy. It's really pushing the market down. Pushed it down. We bounced right off the top of this key level of support perfectly and just sent straight back up and it looks like we might break out i'm not going to get too excited unless we uh bounce out into the uh i don't know 52 53 54 55 range somewhere in in this little bracket of liquidity here uh right where you can see this really heavy little chunk here if we break into that and then we bounce off the top of this uh this whole section here if we bounce off the top I might be getting pretty excited about it not being a bear trap <laughs> uh, right now. It's still a little unconfirmed and real thin right here. This is, uh, I mean, that was a good little leg up with very thin liquidity. We'll have to see how it all works out. Let's take a look at what ETH is looking like, though. Um, ETH is kind of doing the same thing, obviously. Tracks Bitcoin pretty closely. Uh, but it's still breaking out of its little Bitcoin cage. I kind of want to play Smashing Pumpkins. Something about something something rat in a cage. I don't know. It's been a while. <laughs> um, I know the lyrics. I'm just not going to sing it right now. Um, no, I have this weird problem where I can't actually sing lyrics without the actual music. Even my own songs. It's ridiculous. Like I'll write a song 
and I just don't know the lyrics unless I'm playing guitar. It's ridiculous. Anyway, ETH is uh, definitely a very different beast here. It's It's got some really interesting price action here on this little move up that completely filled right back in and and then it was tracking Bitcoin for this little dip here down into liquidity um, and there's a lot of liquidity here for ETH against um, the US dollar I mean it's it's thicker than than Bitcoin really has I mean it's it's looking pretty good and then it just kind of popped right back up and this looks like a lot healthier of a move up than Bitcoin had even I could see Bitcoin kind of losing this really thin leg up that it got here that there's not a lot supporting that with these two liquidity voids hanging out here it's like it looks really weak but eth i don't know maybe this this is the infamous takeover eth moment maybe this is the uh the flippening i don't know i don't know crap i just like to watch it like i'm on a roller coaster and just go with the ups and downs and I don't know what's coming next but it's still fun so strap in for the ride and just know that the worst thing about crypto is not having any and if you have nfts and a little crypto you're good you're on for the ride welcome to the show strap in for the fireworks hopefully we reach the top and get to watch the big fireworks show pretty pretty wild to see but I do like to look at the ETH against Bitcoin chart here um, just so we can really confirm what we're seeing. It looked pretty a little stronger on the ETH chart than it did the Bitcoin chart. And it looks pretty dang strong right here on the Bitcoin to ETH chart. I mean, the flippening looks like it might happen. This looks like a pretty decent chart. That's not bad. Like we're really off in a very key level of liquidity and, and support here. We came running back down to the same level of support that we saw through here and through here. And we're back in through that same zone with this really nice little bump up of liquidity here. Uh, I mean, the volume that's just through here is has historically just been great through this price. So I think we're going to pretty much bounce right here. Even if Bitcoin started tanking and uh, the whole world started screaming and crying and it was over and the SEC banned Bitcoin and the Treasury said it's evil and everyone said crypto has got to go away and we're going to call everyone a criminal who uses it, including Visa and MasterCard and all the celebrities and all of you are going to jail. <laughs> I'm being facetious, of course. Um... No, it's looking pretty pretty solid. I'm pretty excited to see it. Um, yeah, so not really too worried about the flippening, but it would be kind of interesting to see, right? Like, why not? <laughs> Alon, you said Ethereum has moved the same amount of USD as a micronation. Yeah, it's because it is a, an emerging micronation. That's what we're dealing with. I mean, we're building trade deals with traditional nations right now on how we can actually merge our economies as one and not sanction one another. Obviously, crypto does, people don't know this, but crypto does have some interesting ways to sh sanction traditional governments, just like governments have their traditional legal means and political means to sanction cryptocurrencies, which they have done. Uh, some cryptocurrencies, like the Venezuelan petrodollar crypto, is has been uh, under sanctions, and um, it's really fascinating to watch. But crypto sanctioning other governments comes in the form of okay, ban it. It's like chopping off the head of the hydra. Eight more appear. It's not two. It's like eight more because crypto just forks into tons and tons of other markets that uh, you can't stop. It's just. It's pretty wild to see, and uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here. I won't rant too much, but crypto's form of sanctioning is don't mess with us because we're actually trying to make the world a better place. I'm speaking as a cryptocurrency, not a cryptocurrency user. Uh, and we, as cryptocurrencies, <laughs> um, Yes, I'm humanizing a cryptocurrency. I know it's weird, but uh, deal with it. Crypto's weird. Let's keep it weird, right? Um, 
it's kind of cool to see because black markets emerge when you ban something. And where there is supply and where there is demand, there will be markets. And if you outlaw a market, you basically hand that over to criminals. They're not going to stop using it, and they're going to be economically empowered with the most powerful economic technology in the history of humanity. The most self-sovereign economic invention ever to exist will be in the hands of nothing but criminals if we do that. That's its form of sanctioning. It's like, okay, well, if that's what you really want, you just created a emerging nation state of nothing but criminals because you're stupid and you have no clue what prohibition actually has done historically. Considering the news today, I don't think that's going to be the case. Let's dig in. USDC, this is probably a bad one to jump to right away, but we'll talk about it. USDC stablecoin issuer Circle is cooperating with the SEC investigation. That's a really nice way of saying that they were subpoenaed and were forced to give up information. And they are cooperating because they are legally obligated to do so. Um, so, yes. Um, this is pretty cool to see because you're starting to see these trade deals of the emerging nation state that is crypto merging with traditional nation states. That's what we're seeing here. Uh, you're seeing cooperation between emerging nation states. So a lot of people get scared. They see this. They're like, oh my God, crypto is going to get banned. That's not the case. This is what trade deals look like. This is what negotiations look like. So it's great. Um, uh, Pistol Cats, you mentioned, uh, I'm just reading the comments here, I'm a little bit behind, but you said the Compound Founder th uh, threatens users. That's actually in the news, we're going to talk about that here in a minute. So uh, give me just a minute to get there and I'll have some commentary to throw around there, it'll be fun. Uh, totalitarian Morty, you said ETH coin going to get extra wrecked. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. There's no way to tell. Um, I still think everything is a side chain to ETH. Even Bitcoin, from my personal view. Um, maybe I'm spewing a little bit of my maximalist views but i mean i'm building on other chains right now i'm i'm moving i i love layer twos but everything is a layer two eth is a layer two to bitcoin bitcoin's a layer two to eth what does that mean that means everything is all one crypto is all one it's all one thing i don't really care if one thing is going to do better than the other it's it's apples comparing apples to oranges and oranges to oranges <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just like, we're all fighting the same fight. And if we get to the same point in history, which I see as the being on the right side of history, uh, I don't really care how we get there. It could be Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Chickencoin, Buttcoin. I don't care. As long as we get there, that's what's important to me. But ETH does have a strong narrative and you can't really deny trends. So until trends actually reverse... I just spew my maximalist views just because that's the trend. I was the guy who was like, everyone was always like, hey, the uh, the Raiders are, are playing the... <laughs> I'll show you how much I'm into sports. The Raiders are playing against the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> I know. Um, I, I was always like, I don't know, whoever's winning. Like, I just didn't care. It's like... I don't really get competitive sports from an external perspective. If I'm playing a sport, I do get it a little bit more. But like watching it, I'm kind of just like, oh, I got my numbers, uh, I got my bets on whoever the hell's winning. I don't really care. As long as we get there, we're good. If we're on the right side of history and we make it with Dogecoin, I guess so be it. I just, there we are. Um, DNT visits me in my sleep. <laughs> Tolo, you said crypto brings emotions, which are addictive. Yeah, they they are very addictive. Uh, it really plays on, like, 
especially NFTs, like, I used to have a collection of collections as a child, and that's evil when you have crypto emerge with NFTs. It's like, here, Brady, we just want you to collect endlessly. I know you had a collection of collections as a child, and we're going to play on that and sink our little vampire NF teeth into your neck and suck the lifeblood out of you until we have all your ethereums. Yes, it's been horrible. I think I have all my net worth in NFTs now. <laughs> Whatever. Those are those emotions though, right, Morty? Or Tolo. Sorry, you said that. Sorry, I'm reading multiple messages here. Uh, Dogs Potato, you said, is DNT on Polygon? Uh, thank you there for the follow. I really appreciate it. So, is DNT on Polygon? Uh, no. Uh, we are going to migrate Dank to Polygon, though, for Meme Factory. Uh, if we had a reason to migrate DNT to another... Uh, layer 2 solution uh, we would announce that but we don't have any plans to right now uh, the registry is mostly kind of a higher volume larger number staking platform that is meant to be staked to and kind of keeping your coins there and participating in gas free governance so using snapshot so there's not really a need for a layer 2 it's like not much different than using a layer 2 for its purposes because layer two you have to pay a transaction to move all your coins over there and then it's cheap just like the registry you stake all your coins you participate in government governance it's free uh, it's the same kind of concept so there's no reason to really migrate dnt to another chain um yeah it's just not at the moment <laughs> maybe in the near future i don't know but i have a feeling uh, scaling solutions are going to come along for mainnet as well and it won't be much of an issue on top of the fact that voting is free now that we have snapshot in the registry so it's just whatever uh, anyway moving on with the news uh, I'm gonna try and blaze through this a little bit though I'm kind of getting hung up on questions let me answer the questions and then we'll blaze through and then we'll go from there um, thank you for the follow there Russell I appreciate it Parents are done, you said, Tolo. <laughs> um, Russell, you said, hi, please check your project that you're shilling in my channel. Um, thanks for thanks for coming here just to shill. I, uh, I, I really appreciate that. As a, as a Twitch streamer, it's really nice for people to come like advertise their, their Twitch channels and their projects in my channel while I'm live streaming. It's something that Twitch streamers really appreciate. It's... Uh, it, it, you know, it really gets us where we, you know, the feels, it makes us feel really good about uh, doing what we do and, you know, working really hard to bring the news to people. I'll stop if you stop. <laughs> Jesus. Um, not to give you a hard time there, Russell, but please don't come here and chill stuff. Like... You know, you're literally learning and earning right now. Like, don't come here and blow your opportunity to do that because I'm literally paying you to learn. Like, you'll probably learn enough about crypto just sitting here for a couple months to where you won't have to go shill to earn crypto when you can just like learn and earn it instead of shill to earn it. Just, and if this is your project, again, Please don't come here and show your projects without asking. I know, Russell, that's fine. It's just uh, the main rule of our community and the live stream is no advertising. And if this isn't your project and you're just excited about it, um, you are welcome to go post in Project Share in our Discord community and tell us why you're excited about the project and tell us why it's not a scam. Tell us why it's actually really cool. And I would actually happily go check it out. But, uh, you know, it's all about your delivery and uh, uh, telling us why. You know, start with why. 
Don't start with what, start with why. Always with everything in your life. If you're actually genuinely wanting to see something gain traction and have people use it and care about it, start with why. Ha, huh, the word shill gets blocked on Twitch. That's interesting. If it's a token to use for AI, that's that's cool. Um, yeah, we do have Discord, though, if you want to join there, Russell. Just please keep in mind the rules if you're going to join. I don't mind, you know. I've been, I've been there. I've been in the early stages of a crypto project you're super excited about and you want to go tell everyone about it. I, I get it. I get it. But there's a fine line between being excited about a project and shilling a project. So just know the difference. Start with why and you'll be fine. Shill to earn is the next gaming meta. <laughs> Slay some zombies says. Shill to earn. I think that's always been the game, right? Anyway, I'm getting hung up. Um, let me uh, let me blaze through some of this. Um, so, hold on one second here. Let me make sure I've got... There we go. Okay. All right. Um, Hong Kong issues a technical white paper on the EHKD cryptocurrency so obviously this is really picking up pace with a lot of nations that everyone is building a central bank digital currency everyone is i mean you'd be you'd be crazy not to the future of money is digital it's been digital for a long time when we went to fiat currency it just didn't have good accounting tools until now and then and then everyone's like okay why do you need a public ledger uh, why is that so important when it's just a public database? Oh, I don't know. So some jerk can't just edit that thing and just put whatever he wants in there and just print however much he wants and do whatever they want without any recourse or auditing public au publicly auditable recourse? Yeah, exactly. So hopefully all these central bank digital currencies are merging with that vision and not just trying to create panopticon totalitarian surveillance tools because they're not gonna make it because well they're on the wrong side of history that's it they're on the wrong side of history we'll see which ones are and are not visa working on interoperability platform for stable coins and central bank digital currencies so if uh visa is going to be in charge of the panopticon am i saying that right is that, is that pronounced right? I think I pronounced it right. The Panopticon? I don't know. Anyway, uh, if they are in charge of the all-seeing eye of the entire financial world and everyone's building on Visa's network for all their central bank digital currencies, great, wonderful, but do it right. Start with why, yet again, and actually build something that is an open public utility or public service or public good. And if Visa does that, I'm all for it. If they don't, meh, down the tubes with you. Um, oh, Bloomberg is going to make me pay for this one. Let me just read the title because I already read this. The SEC chief says the U.S. won't ban cryptocurrencies. Duh. I mean, that would be stupid. I mean, like, come on. It's a no-brainer. Moving on. <laughs> Sorry. I love, the co I love doing commentary. Um... Thank you so much for the sub there, Anasarius. You're at eight months. You are just trying to farm up them Twitch channel points so you can, like, whenever we get the facial, like, masks and stuff, you can use them and put, like, poops on my head. Maybe poops we can earn, like NFT poops. That would be cool. Has anyone done that? NFT poops? They should. I'd buy one. It'd be my PFP. So the DeFi community blasts, <laughs> this was the story we were waiting for here, uh, blasts the Compound CEO for doxed comment. Uh, in a nutshell, um, <laughs> Robert got on Twitter after accidentally sending out like 
multiple millions of dollars worth of compound token to just random people and tried to threaten them to send the compound tokens back. One person had like upwards of like $20 million US dollars worth of the compound token <laughs> sent to them. And he got on Twitter and was just like threatening people and said, most of you people are doxxed anyway. And oh, you'll get what's coming you to you type of tweet, right? And um, it was a little ridiculous. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of people did actually send the compound tokens back, which is cool to see. But um, yeah, I mean, it's a little ridiculous. I mean, if you make mistakes in crypto, they are kind of permanent. And if someone wants to be kind enough to fix your mistake by sending it back like these giant uh transactions uh, uh transaction fees like there was like a 50 million dollar transaction fee and the miners actually sent it back i mean that's cool if someone wants to actually you know go the full nine yards and do that and and make an on-chain representation of their integrity and say hey that sucked i get it here take your money back that's pretty cool to see but to threaten people to do it, I mean, it's kind of like your mistake. I mean, you should have gotten on Twitter and said, I screwed up. Would you all please send it back? Because I really feel like a bonehead right now. Please just send it back and it would be super awesome of you. And maybe I'll launch some NFTs as a thank you. Like that would have been a better way to go about it. Um, uh, this threatening people, I mean, I bet he got less back than he would have if he would have just said something like that. I mean, it was his mistake. It wasn't theirs. This isn't like, I don't know. I'll stop. That's the story. Here we go. Yes, a 10% rebate. Anasaris, uh, yes, he did offer a 10% rebate. He said you could keep part of it. But like, still, it's kind of like, it was in it was in bad taste. Get with the program, Robert. Um, El Salvador takes first steps to mining Bitcoin with volcanoes. Whoa, right? Like what? Mining Bitcoin with volcanoes? We could do that? Why isn't every volcano on Earth a source of power generation? If we can do that, did Bitcoin just prove that that's possible in El Salvador? Is, is this happening? Does anyone know? Does that does that happen? Do we generate electricity like a like a power plant using a volcano? And if we haven't yet, we are now in El Salvador because of Bitcoin. That's pretty cool. I can dig it. I can dig it. You got to post the cat volcano meme. I don't know what the cat volcano meme is. Will you please post it in Discord? Because I'm curious. I'm curious now. Uh, TikTok launches the first creator-led NFT collection. They announced that they're going to dig into crypto. And uh, they are launching it on Immutable X. So, yeah. It's pretty cool to see like larger platforms actually do this. I want to see World of Warcraft do it, though. Like, World of Warcraft, I was a die-hard player for a long time. Imagine if all the cosmetics, pets, and non-actual game affecting like stats were NFT based. All pets, all novelties, everything just suddenly was an NFT and there was a marketplace around those NFTs for novelties in World of Warcraft. The freaking game would blow up again, like all over again. Everyone would just go play it just because it's crypto and NFTs and pretty novel use case for NFTs. Hey. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Blizzard. You do know you could dominate the gaming industry and crypto all in one shot if you weren't being be, being stubborn about crypto. Just go do it. Do the right thing. Make everyone's head just spin and pull in all those players again. Yet again, they'd probably pay your crappy little $15 a month fee. In fact, you could probably shave a little bit off the top of your marketplace and not have to charge that anymore so people could play their favorite game without having to give you money forever and ever and ever. It'd be wonderful. You could probably even let all those damn servers that you keep shutting down from super fans trying to just create old school WoW so you shut it down and launch your own. I won't rant too much more. But hey, there's a lot of people in crypto that used to be World of Warcraft players because 
the game theory makes sense and crypto makes more sense. And when you get involved in it, you stop playing WoW. So A, crypto has been great because it got everyone off World of Warcraft who had an addiction problem. And B, it actually woke you up to the realities of the gaming industry. And C, it actually told you, hey, you know, there's a brighter future out there full of a better game that you could play. And then D, it was like, hey, World of Warcraft, you could suck us all back in yet again if you just launched NFTs. Wait, don't take my advice, Blizzard. Please don't take my advice because then I might actually play WoW again. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Like millions of people might play that game if you did that. Please don't do that. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I'm kind of not... I'm hoping they don't do that though because that would actually happen. I might play WoW again. Phew. U.S. Bank launches Bitcoin custody service <laughs> as institutions race to cater to the crypto demand. Yes, U.S. Bank is deciding, yeah, we're going to go ahead and be a custody holder of your Bitcoins because why would you want to hold your Bitcoins? Why We should hold your Bitcoins. That way we can stake them in DeFi because holy crap, those returns, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, we'll do custody for your Bitcoins. That would be, that would be excellent for us. That would be good for us. Um, yeah. Whatever, U.S. Bank. I'm glad you're on the right side of history, though. I will say that. I don't know how much business you'll get. I hope it's good for you. I hope you're like telecom businesses when the internet emerged and they all just became service providers for internet instead of telecom companies. And you're one of those who sticks around. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Leading Republican on House Financial Services Committee introduces a bill to establish a safe arbor for digital tokens. If this passes, that would be cool. Then there would be like a safe harbor uh, two-year window, which is based off of uh, Crypto Mom's plan to actually create a two-year safe harbor window where you could sufficiently decentralize your project and still have it centralized for those two years with the plan to decentralize and blah 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 once it's sufficiently decentralized you're good to go um or you have to register with the sec if you can't do it within two years is basically the nutshell version of what this is and this builds on top of that and adds some other interesting things uh for a safe harbor for digital tokens for us developers cool i hope it works I hope it takes off. Um, I don't know what to think about Zero Hedge sometimes. Um, I don't know what to, I don't know what to believe or not believe. Uh, this Tyler Durden person is like, I, I, you know, I was kind of sucked into it when I was a little younger. I used to watch it. I was like, who is Tyler Durden? I used to watch Fight Club. It was great marketing. I was like, yeah, this is it. Uh, as I get a little older, I, I uh, I follow less people and I trust less people as I get older and you probably should too. Um, so I don't, I take everything on Zero Hedge with a grain of salt. So I haven't read into this to confirm it and I don't know what the motivations are behind it if it's true, but George Soros is cashing out of all stocks and putting some capital into cryptocurrencies. Should we go dump our stocks? I don't own many stocks. I don't know many people in crypto that own many stocks. I think we're just ahead of the curve and George Soros is like, oh, uh, build back better and you will own nothing and be happy and uh, oh, shit, I've got to go buy crypto, don't I? Yes, you do, George. This is the world you created. Deal with it. <laughs> I don't know. Read up onto it. Let me know what you think. Grayscale adds Solana and Uniswap to crypto investment fund so you can gladly and happily pay Grayscale money for fake Solana and Uniswap tokens. Um, I have a mixed feeling about this. Like, I, I want to know what the accountability is behind Grayscale. Uh, Obviously, that's what institutions use to buy Bitcoin and, and have been. It's the main way you buy fake Bitcoins if you don't want to actually 
hold Bitcoin, you can still have exposure to the price movements. Uh, pretty cool. They're adding price exposure for institutional investors uh, on Solana and Uniswap tokens now as well. I do know that uh, some institutions that let you invest in Grayscale through their platform, like Morgan Stanley and, and others like them, I believe JP Morgan as well, uh, require you to have like you're, you're supposed to buy like a million dollars or more uh, to be able to even have that. I think you have to have a net worth of a million dollars or more to even be eligible to buy them, I think is how it works. I don't know, I'd, I'd have to read more into it, but I think that's how it works. Interesting, uh, fake Solana, fake Uniswap, fake Bitcoin. Where the hell is fake Ethereum? Did they do that already? Did I miss that in the news? I think I might have missed that in the news. You'd think Ethereum would already be on here. It's gotta be, right? Anyway, um, this is an interesting piece of news right here. If you're if you're just kind of like passively listening, listen up here. This was weird. Banks are starting to issue proposals to DAOs. Yeah, you heard me right. Banks are issuing proposals to DAOs. Uh, so Society General. I don't. I. I know the accent's terrible. I'm sorry. I'm American. We we suck. <laughs> we don't. We're not taught other languages at all. Um, it's one of the larger financial institutions in France, if I if I remember correctly, and they're actually submitting a proposal to MakerDAO to to actually be a part of MakerDAO. So um, that's pretty interesting. That is pretty interesting. Uh, Morty, uh, about the stream token, I'll tell you a little bit more at the end here. We're getting to that news here in just a second. Um, yeah, we'll get to it here shortly. Dog's Potato, a DAO, is basically like, you know, joining a guild with people who have common goals and they all join in as a group. Sometimes they put money together or sometimes they contribute skills and move forward to achieve those common goals. That's basically what a DAO is, but programmatically secure and guaranteed by smart contracts, which makes it a lot better than 17th century DAOs where you have to agree to disagree and trust the word of a handshake. Uh, that is a little better. I, I, I dig it. But yes, decentralized, autonomous organization, which most of them are not autonomous. They're more like guilds than they are autonomous anything. Um, I think a DAO and autonomous is a bit of a misnomer. Uh, but it does kind of get the idea across of what's happening. You are the transactional agreements and social contracts between people or even institutions, as we're seeing with banks, is programmatical and guaranteed. So I guess that is the autonomous portion of it, but uh, there's still a lot of human interaction. There's still a lot of human necessity, and there's still a lot of benevolent dictator um, realities that you have to face when you're dealing with a quote-unquote DAO, D-A-O. Dogs Potato, you said how can it be de decentralized if someone has so if someone has to code and supply data? Uh, because once you launch a smart contract, it's a human free contractual agreement that you are like if you're using it, you're agreeing to use it, and it does one thing very well. Uh, that has been very well tested, audited, and repeatedly done to do that one thing over and over and over, it's kind of like there's no human involved in there anymore. Yeah, a human coded it, but once it's launched on the Ethereum mainnet or other networks like it, then there's no human. It is completely decentralized. There's no one involved anymore, unless you choose for there to be someone involved, which in some cases is a good idea. Uh, full autonomous smart contracts and 
truly decentralized autonomous organizations ran by AI is kind of a nightmare scenario if you think about the future where we could move down this dystopian rabbit hole where there are no humans involved anymore. So, but that is the case. There, there is, you, we are moving in that direction and that is the reality. And AI could actually theoretically transact with smart contracts right now. And there's nothing you could do about that without a human involved. Kyle, you said, I, I think a lot of people in Web3 have established DAOs that are actually just informal organizations. Yeah, mostly. That's what an, a multi-sig is. A multi-sig is what most DAOs are at their core, unless it's like Moloch, which is kind of a step above a multi-sig. Um, DAOs and Moloch DAOs, DAOs using multi-sigs and Moloch DAOs are as good as it gets in terms of the whole autonomous thing. Uh, we are starting to see that change a little bit, but until AI is openly transacting on these networks as an entity outside of human intervention, then I wouldn't even call them anything more than what you just said, just kind of informal organizations. Alon, you can go ahead and link stuff. It just blocks it out for everyone. No one can see it. It just blocks it. Dogs Potato, you said AI will outpace crypto space as it's a 24-7 and super fast communication. Maybe. Um, I have the view that cryptocurrency wasn't really made for humans. Money has historically been used to limit consumption of people. Like, don't let them eat too much, don't let them buy too much, don't let them consume too much, tax them if they get out of hand, use taxes to kind of offset costs and overconsumption. Uh, that's kind of just how it's been done for centuries. And my view is that we should be doing that same thing with AI. We should force all AI and all AI developers to use blockchain and cryptocurrency networks to transact, because if that's the case, you can force them to pay for access to data, pay for access to execute functions, pay for access to do certain things, and that could also be in the form of personal pay, personalized paywalls. If AI wants access of information about you, it needs to pay you and you need to confirm and accept said payment. Uh, I think that is a really interesting and novel way to head off the fact that AI really has no connection to humans other than financial right now. And right now a lot of large corporations have control of that AI and those corporations should be also forced to abide by some type of financial transaction to do anything with said AI so it doesn't just become out of control. I mean, that's how we've controlled every other sentient being. If we're creating sentient beings, they should probably be transacting in some way. Even your dog has to transact in some way to get food. And then you transact to give them food. So <laughs> all sentient beings largely are subject to transactional relationships to control consumption. I think we should do that with AI. What do I think about the GPT-3 NFTs? I think they're pretty cool. I want to talk to my cool cats and crypto punks and whatever the heck else I have. Like, I don't have cool cats and punks, sadly, but it would be cool if I did. Maybe I could talk to someone else's and feel like I owned it. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, moving on with the news. Um... Dex aggregator one inch blocks out US trades in preparation for a separate American platform. You're going to be seeing a lot of this because this is part of the trade deals. American political spheres want KYC. They need KYC. They must have it. They must sink their teeth into future generations so they can suck their lifeblood out and actually have a name and a number 
tied to said person so they can do those things um yeah this is kind of stupid and this weird temporary trade deal thing that i don't think elderly politicians truly understand what's happening so this seems like a weird bargaining chip from developers and i think a lot of developers are going to launch like separate ones where there's one that's fully decentralized and one that is kyc'd no one will use the KYC'd one, everyone will use the decentralized one, and then everyone will finally wake up and realize, oh, I understand the technology now. Eh, whatever. If that's what it takes, fine. Whatever. Um, so Cardano is has announced a dApp store. So apparently they've got a lot of developers on board building dApps. There's all kinds of stuff coming down the road, enough to actually put out a dApp store. So... That's coming down the line, I believe. Yeah, on September 12th, it says. Um, no, I'm sorry, not on September 12th. That was when the... It's not out yet. September... September 25th is when they launched it. This is old news. What the heck? Well, I don't know. Apparently, there is a DAP store somewhere. I don't have the link to it in this article, sadly. Um... But apparently there's one live already on the, as of the 25th of last month. <laughs> Sorry for the late news. <laughs> I told you I missed some stuff while I was on my break. Uh, Dapper Labs took NFTs mainstream. Now it wants to do the same for DAOs. By creating hosted DAOs, just like they're hosted crypto kitties and cutting a lot of corners and not actually being decentralized. Not to poke too much fun at Dapper Labs, but that's how they took things mainstream, is they cut a lot of corners. They created a very hosted, very fun game-like experience. And if they do that for DAOs too, cool. Cool. I'm down. Um, I'm down for the DAOs. Uh, it sounds like kind of the coin base of DAOs and DAO tools. So if that works out, cool. I hope to see it. Uh, but I have a feeling that's going to be that bargaining chip type reality that I was talking about where there's these very centralized platforms and then very decentralized platforms. And uh, I think they're both going to, going to coexist and a lot more people are going to use the decentralized one because it just makes a lot more sense unless you're a corporation, institution, bank, government, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, we'll see. Bitcoin market shrugs off the Pandora Papers. I haven't gotten to look into the Pandora Papers myself, very deeply anyway. I, I, on a cursory level, I kind of understand it. Uh, basically, a lot of top politicians and wealthy families and, and um, royal families and, uh, you know, all the, all the peoples uh were laundering money, hiding money, and apparently they were using cryptocurrency. This isn't anything new even the panama papers came out and it was discovered that uh even i believe the uh there's a number of wealthy political families here in the u.s that were involved in the btc e uh company we'll call it a company um uh, when it was raided by the FBI, they discovered a lot of information about people who had invested in it or took part in it and were in on the early stakes, stakeholders of the platform when it launched. So this isn't anything new. This is just kind of a continuation of that same story. And these, one are, these ones are called the Pandora Papers. So we had the, uh, the previous three papers before this. I forgot what they're called. Um... But there's been three leaks like this of ultra wealthy corporations, families, and politicians uh, using shell corporations and laundering money and using cryptocurrency and uh, yeah, all that good stuff. Lots of celebrities, politicians, wealthy families. If it interests you, I'll link it to you. You can go read up on it yourself. Uh, pretty interesting story. It's still developing, obviously, uh, but it's a continuation of one that's been going for about a decade now. A uh, bit of a sad story to kind of end things on here uh, on the last few chunks of news. Ethereum developer Virgil Griffith uh, pleads guilty in a plea deal uh, to conspiracy charges in the North Korea sanctions case. He went to North Korea. He taught them how to launder money uh, and escape 
U.S. government sanctions using cryptocurrency specifically. He is a known Ethereum contributor and developer and has been for quite some time. Sad to see uh, he is taking a plea deal, plea, plea deal, but that's kind of what you end up having to do in the U.S. justice system. You take a plea deal to get a lighter sentence and you you just say you're guilty even though you may not truly believe that or you may not have actually been guilty you just say you're guilty so you're not in prison for 150 years as opposed to maybe five to 20 years um and that's what he did and he pleaded guilty and he's going to go to prison for north korea sanctions violations um pretty sad story i think he was a little naive about what he was doing when he was doing it maybe he was proving a point uh i'm not sure what his motivations were especially considering it's just a uh surveillance nightmare in crypto right now so what he was saying i don't think is truly valid sure you could probably skirt sanctions laws but it's fully transparent if you do and it's really easy to tell if a nation state if another nation state is doing it so I don't know what his motivations were there. It sounded more like a he was trying to honeypot North Korea or something. Um, I don't know. I don't want to get too much into it. Virgil, I feel for you. I'm sorry for you. It sucks. It sucks. Um, I wish you well. Ethereum game. Axie Infinity. We're on the airdrop section here. Um, Axie Infinity, uh, if you've been a player... Um, since last year in October, 2020 of October, you should have gotten an airdrop of AXS tokens into your wallet if you have been a player. Uh, that should have been automatic. You should be able to log in. You should see them in your account if you play. It was based on how much land you own, how much you played, achievements you had, how many axes you've owned, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, so go check your wallets. You might have some AXS tokens. So that's it for the news. Uh, let me catch up on the comments here. Um, what DAO platform would I use, Anaceris, you ask? Um, well, District Zero X is building DAOs. We are just uh, in a funny little development phase that just broke through finally. So I would say my own <laughs> but if I were being non-biased, uh, uh, but I mean, we have the standard DAO tool right now in the registry. If you submit a proposal in the registry, you're using Snapshot, which is really the de facto go-to solution for all DAOs right now in crypto. Everyone's using Snapshot because it's free. Uh, you, people don't have to pay gas to vote. It's It makes a lot more sense, and we have it in the registry now. So I would just say District 0x and Snapshot. Uh, however, uh, for Treasury management, really, District 0x doesn't have our own solution for Treasury management. Uh, we have historically used um, uh, Gnosis Safe, and Gnosis has Gnosis Safe apps, which allow you to use dApps uh, as a large group of people contributing to a DAO or, well, at least a multi-sig group of people. Uh, so use Snapshot for multi-sig key holders to make a decision. So issue a Snapshot poll, uh, everyone decides to do this. Snapshot uh, governance takes place using Gnosis Safe and the district registry and that's it. You're you're good to go with your your governance decisions and if everyone's like okay well we want to provide liquidity uh and we use snapshot to vote for that multi-sig key holders decide to go do that they sign to add liquidity from the treasury and that's it so i'd say district zero x snapshot and gnosis safe that is my preferred platform that's what we're going to be using for stream tide that's what we're going to be using for all our districts that's what we've historically used and uh Possibly even Aragon if uh, things start to pick up pace with Aragon development and they find ways to really be a competitive force against this basic model. But really the basic model and standard for everyone is Gnosis Safe, Gnosis Safe apps, and Snapshot. That's it. That's what we're using. Yeah, I love Gnosis Safe too. 
Uh, so... Alon, you said, yeah, a lot of people ended up dead for leaking it. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Uh, probably this one as well. We're probably going to see a lot of that. It's weird. Eco, you said you don't know anything about Gnosis Safe, but you have a related question. Um... Is there any way to change a private key on an ETH wallet? Um, that's a bit of a loaded question, so I'll have to unwrap it a little, a little uh, kind of unwrap that a little bit. Uh, the answer is yes and no, but if we unwrap it, I'll kind of give you the nuance as to why. Um, there are wallets being developed that will allow you to do this and change your private key and public key that you're using for said wallet. But what is a wallet? Right now, what everyone thinks of as a wallet is a public and private key pair. You have a private key that gives you the authority to move funds that are held on this public address and public key. Um, that's what a wallet is for most people. However, Argent Wallet is launching something as well as a couple other people. Uh, I think Argent's a little further ahead than most people though. And, uh, and it's only a mobile wallet at the moment. But Argent is going to allow you to send transactions almost like Gnosis Safe apps really let you do it to where it's like a multi-sig key holder type thing but you would be the key holder to all those authorization uh, transactions so let's say you do want to change what address the DAO is using you would be able to do that on Argent Wallet and create a different public and private key using your um, private keys that are used to control that. So uh, it's a little weird. It's hard to explain if you don't know the nuances of public and private key encryption. Uh, but if that made sense, um, cool. If not, go play with Argent Wallet. Uh, that way when some of this launches and gets out in the wild and people understand something other than holding a private key to spend funds held on a public address uh, and something beyond that model, definitely go check out Argent Wallet. I think I think also Nosa Safe and Argent Wallet are probably the two that would be capable of doing that sooner than later. But the answer is no, not right now. You can't. But soon. Trademark. And no, there's not a way to move a private key to a multi-sig wallet that you would just be a signer on that multi-sig wallet so you would have to you have to move the funds no matter what that's just there's no way around that um if you want to put them in a gnosis safe you have to move them from your personal wallet to the gnosis safe and then you have multi-sig key holders as a part of that safe and there's no way around that initial transaction to make that happen Um, and you said, here's the goal is to transfer a wallet to someone else in a way that they can trust you, trust that you no longer have that key. Um, that's just a trust thing. That's like the, that's like the, the art on the wall, you know, that's like, uh, like the crypto art up on the wall here. It's no different than that. I have to trust this company and to know that they didn't actually keep those private keys and aren't going to steal any of the money I put on them. You can't really fully trust that. Uh, you can, but it's more like a hot wallet. Don't put any more on there than you're willing to lose and hope the company has the integrity to, to not do something like that and hope they didn't have a bad actor or em disgruntled employee that kept keys just to be a jerk. And that's just, that's kind of, that's it. That's all you've got. They have to trust you, this is the short answer. Are there any bulk transaction services so every contract on that address gets migrated all at once? Um, you're not really migrating the contracts, you're just migrating the tokens that you're holding using those contracts. So 
the way you would have to do it is, I think there's only one tool out there that mass sends tokens from point A to point B, and that is uh, Sweeposaurus. Uh, Sweeposaurus, I think, is still up. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not coming up. Sweep. Osaurus. Sweep. Sweep Osaurus. Mm. I'd have to find it. It was called Sweep Osaurus, though. Um. Hey, thank you for the cheer there. Appreciate it, blue light. Still stacking it up to give it to Gitcoin Grants or Streamtide once we go live. So keep it coming if you want to contribute to grants. That's what we're doing with the money. Um, yeah, Eco, there's not really another bulk transaction service other than Sweeposaurus. And it is in beta or alpha even, I think. And it is kind of a use at your own risk type thing. So um, it's definitely something you would want to test thoroughly and expect bugs. I don't think there's a good tool. Uh, wait. Maybe. Oh, no. Not unless it's already in uh, Gnosis. Gnosis actually has the ability to do that securely. Gnosis will let you sweep all tokens out of a Gnosis safe to another one in a single transaction. But you have to manually send everything to a Gnosis safe to do that. So... Yeah, I don't think there's another way around it. Hey, thank you for the follow there. Uh, Zyba? Appreciate it. Blue Light, you're learning what a cheer is? A cheer is you giving me uh, Twitch money. It's their form of a uh, currency. Cheers are their currency. Bits. They call them bits. And uh, yeah, you're just giving me uh, their wannabe cryptocurrency is what you're giving me uh which just translates into money when it dumps into my account and uh then we put that money into the pool for uh stream tide i do have to pay taxes on all this though because i am an individual streaming basically on twitch with my own social security number so i have to pay taxes on all this plus they take a giant cut and then we give it to people and i typically donate my own money on top of that to get it back up to where it was after all the taxes and fees from twitch and amazon and everything so we can actually donate what all of you have given me which sucks uh, but holy moly thank you so much for the gifted subs there eco thank you i really appreciate it all of you who got a sub too please thank them that's freaking awesome i really appreciate it uh, by the way, he's Eco is basically giving you. Uh, hey, thank you for the follow there, the gully man. Uh, Eco is basically giving you the tide token too, because uh, tide token goes live today, and your Twitch channel points or uh, not not your Twitch channel points, your um um your stream points. Like if you type in uh, points points like this, boom. Uh, you can see how many points you have, and those are your Tide tokens. Uh, they may not be one for one, but I think we can pull it off. We're going to see. I have to do the math. I have to chop it down a little bit, but I think it's going to be one for one. When am I moving to Theta? Whenever Theta will send me a freaking invite. I've asked for months, and I just kind of gave up because they wouldn't respond to me. So I just gave up. I would love to use their platform, but you know what? Twitch makes it easy to basically tokenize my channel points in a way that I can have a loyalty store so I can peg your time spent on stream to an actual cryptocurrency. And I can't even do that on Theta. Theta has this weird walled garden thing. They won't let me in. I can't use their platform. I just gave up. I was just like, whatever. I'm done. I love that i love what they're doing but it's just it's not worth the headache if you know someone at theta let them know and maybe i'll go check it out but at this point i kind of just want to stick with twitch because um i have a feeling twitch is gonna see the light soon and dive into crypto a little heavier well actually they did i uh i had some news about it a couple weeks ago i think well more than a couple weeks 
Uh, Zyba, you said any tips on getting into crypto? Avoid it. <laughs> uh, you're getting into crypto right now, Zyba. Like, you're listening to me talk on stream and educate you about crypto, and you're earning crypto as you watch right now. Like, so congratulations. You just found the easiest, lowest bar to entry to get into crypto that you could possibly find on the internet. And I would challenge anyone to beat me on that because no one can. Not unless they go to Twitch directly or copy what I'm doing. And I even open source everything I'm doing so people can copy me, but no one has yet to actually copy me. So it's gotta be either someone copying me or Twitch doing it themselves. So congratulations, you're into crypto, you're earning it right now. Yeah, eco, it is a pain. I don't know what the heck. I don't know what's up. And yeah, blue light, uh, the stank is the points that I'm going to be using. Stank is kind of just our de facto go-to uh, tools for, like, you can still burn them and get the actual stream token when you type in points. But it's two different bots. Like, Twitch has their Twitch channel points, but I can't control it very well. So I have a bot that's kind of ticking, ticking them up as a separate account. And that's what you see when you scroll down on Twitch on the leaderboard. You're see you're not seeing the Twitch channel points. You're seeing the actual dank points. So there's stank, which is the stanky Twitch channel points. And then the actual dank, which was historically exchangeable one for one for Meme Factory's dank token. Uh, but we did have to end that due to gas fees, unfortunately. But we're going to spin that back up with the Tide token now. So uh, same situation, different token. And uh, yeah, everyone who has points is going to get retroactively airdropped the Tide token, which should be live probably by the time I get off stream. Um, I don't know when we're going to do the airdrop. I got to do a lot of math and accounting, figure out who gets what, make sure it's fair, all that. But once I have a good plan on uh, distribution uh, to everyone who's been watching on stream, uh, we're good to go. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Bonus tokens for Brady's concert POAP holders. I actually like that idea, Grasp on Crypto, because uh, I'm definitely going to add the Tide token to the tip bot in Discord, and I will probably be doing airdrops to people in that channel if I can get that token working properly in discord i still have yet to actually fix that i don't know why but whatever uh either way yeah i'd love to do something like that even if it's just like i don't know we'll get we'll get to that point once i get past the actual distribution we'll have fun with the token and there's a two-year vesting schedule and i did find out from try roll so we had the question last week what do they do with the uh 1.5 percent of the token supply that they're going to keep uh, Try Roll actually does some pretty cool stuff. Uh, Try Roll is going to uh, help make markets. I guess they actually add provide liquidity for some of their projects on Uniswap, and it helps the community get in and out of that token. So part of the reason they want it is to provide liquidity. So I don't know how much liquidity they're providing, at what price or whatever. I don't know how that works, but that's cool that they do that. Also, their tokens are on the two-year vesting schedule as well, is what they told me. So uh, they won't have all of them right away, and they're going to provide liquidity once they get them. So cool. That kind of locks them up. You don't have to worry about roll dumping into liquidity if you decided to provide that type of patronage for the Tide token and provide liquidity. Um, yeah, they also set up their own earn codes to distribute social money from its reserves to the broader community. So I guess they give out the Tide token for us as well in various campaigns and, and stuff that they do for marketing. So yeah, so that's what they do with their 1.5% of the token supply. I'm cool with that. Go for it. Try roll. If you think you can help us out, we'll help you out and we'll throw each other bones and I'm excited. Let's see it. Let's see it happen. Let's see. Uh... Ah, Tolo, you're not doing too bad. You got 12,000 dank on there. 147 out of 1,070 people on the leaderboard. It's not too bad. Dank, stank ratio. Um, yeah, blue light. I don't know what the dank and stank ratio actually is because Twitch 
does weird stuff with their their stank well their twitch channel points aka stank uh, they do weird stuff with it and that's why i couldn't go with their points i could have if i wanted to but they would be like controlling my economics of my token if i did that so i had to have a degree of separation to where you can burn your twitch channel points and airdrop uh dank onto everyone um but that's going to be changed over to the tide token going forward and uh yeah, and obviously that math will have to change over time as the vesting schedule completes at over two years and things work out. But yeah, we're we're going to be moving forward with that. They're supposed to let me know. I got a brand new ledger set up. I set up a ridiculous security system uh, for storing the private key for the new multisig. I do have a Gnosis safe set up to vest the new Tide tokens to. And... Uh, yeah, if I went on about how I secured these tokens, it was probably on the same level of what most centralized exchanges do to try and secure their funds and multiple physical locations, splitting private keys in half and moving them around and having multi-sig key holders and blah, 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 and multiple copies and multiple versions. Yeah, uh, what I did was absurd, but if you want to know kind of what I'm into with private key security, there is actually a pretty good one on YouTube that is still valid that shows how deep down the rabbit hole I go with private se private key security. So uh, if you're interested in that, go check it out. It is the wallet review on a very old DAP stream episode that was still called the DAP Digest. So let's see. And Dogs Potato know the uh, Tide token is not on Polygon. But because it is in try roll, it, they are like a hosted wallet service. So it's totally gas free when you go redeem them. You just need a try roll account. You will have a link that you is unique to you and that lets you redeem your tokens into your try roll wallet. And then for token controlled access, you will be able to link your try roll wallet to the Discord bot so you can have access to new channels without ever having to spend gas. The only time you would have to spend gas is if you chose to send your Tide tokens to the tip bot, which we will also set up soon, and that will allow you to tip the Tide token back and forth between everyone. Um, if you want to do that, obviously there's fees for getting in and out of the tip bot. That's up to you. Uh, and there will also be fees if you're providing liquidity, of course. That's up to you if you wanted to provide that type of patronage for the community entirely up to you and there would also obviously be fees if you ever tried to remove them or sell them or use uniswap or for for some reason uh but there won't be um fees if you're using snapshot governance uh so the tide token is mainly to get token controlled access for a special channel in discord that whoever has been here on twitch will be able to be eligible for a grant on StreamTide. So right now I have to manually approve grants. So let me show you how this works. No, I, there's no KYC, dogs potato. Not any more than what you're giving when you create a Twitch account, which is actually quite a bit. So you're giving your IP address, you're giving your email, you're uh, giving your hardware fingerprint of your device you're using, as well as some other fancy schmancy stuff that most centralized platforms like Twitch use to identify you. So here's StreamTide. So we have the final designs done. So at the top, we're going to have the announcement section, which I will be able to push out whenever we have a grant round going and I'll be able to tell everyone what's going on. If there's, if we're down for maintenance, blah, 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 blah all that cool stuff will be awesome. Uh, landing page is pretty simple. It will be this, but animated. Then you will just click the go to app button if you want to dive in and you're good to go. And then you're going to actually land on the grants page, which you can scroll through various artists, look at their different profiles that they have up to receive funding. If you donate to them, they will get matching from the grant pool. 
and yeah that's that's pretty straightforward there it's also a content portal like if you're just browsing through people's profiles you'll be able to see their content right here some of it will obviously be locked and you won't be able to get access to it unless you're a donator but if you donate you'll unlock a perk button that is up to the artists to provide whatever they want in that perk button it could be an nft airdrop it could be try roll tokens it could be a private vip live stream it could be uh cheap concert tickets discounts to swag whatever they want to put in there it's just a, a whatever they want to put in there for perks a single url uh, and yeah so that's that then uh yeah the uh platypus is gonna i think we might have to do a, a generative nft drop for the platypus i'm not gonna be selling it it's gonna be something you have to earn and like earn the platypus nfts and i think that would be really fun but i have to think about a fun and fair way to go about doing it so no um to answer the earlier question though um Stream Tide is going to be on XDAI, but the Tide token is going to be on Mainnet. But it's going to be, you're going to need the Tide token to be able to publish these grants and actually have this content up here and have your donate and support buttons. Otherwise, everyone else is just going to have just a basic, a little bit about me and social media links, and that will be a basic user profile. And when you are in your settings page, you are going to obviously be able to add all that content and social links and everything, but you'll be able to apply for a grant right here. And when you apply for a grant, it's going to pop up and ask you, um, let me find it here. Uh, it's gonna ask you obviously to accept the terms uh, and conditions, and it will give you a brief summary of what grants are and why you're doing this. And once you do, then you will be live with your actual grant profile and then you can add all your content and your perks button URL and actually turn things on for supporters and turn things on for the public and blah, blah, blah. You also have an add content button to add freely add content there and uh, set up your profile the way you want it. And that is about it for that. So... Yeah, then we do obviously have a leaderboard. So how much you actually received for your grant, how much matching you received from us, as well as the total received between the two. So it seems like we have a shiller in chat. <laughs> Why are you talking about the Elon Musk meme coin? <laughs> or Shad? I don't know. I don't know which one you're talking about. I think you're talking about Shibe. <laughs> the Shibe controversy? Um, I don't know. I think Shibe token is going is actually going to stick around for interesting reasons. I mean, the it's actually tied to an, a DEX, isn't it? I don't know. I can't remember. Or it's real. Or both. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think it's I think it's weird the stuff you think is just nonsense ends up sticking around and then the stuff you think is like going to be like the next big thing ends up being a scam. It's so hard to tell in crypto and I hate it. I hate it. That's actually why I do this stream and that's why I'm trying to launch my app to be this very straightforward thing. And when I'm launching my token on Tri Roll, it's a very straightforward thing. And if I launch an NFT of these platypus NFTs, it's going to be a very straightforward thing that has no nuances like buy now, sell later, number go up, all this stuff. It's like going to be within the ethos of buy it, buy it, don't earn it, <laughs> earn it, don't buy it, earn it, don't buy it. I'll say it twice. Uh, as well as doing NFTs the right way and giving them utility functionality if you launch a token make it for a very specific reason so it's for governance make people earn that in some meaningful way and if people do want to buy it sure that's fine there's uniswaps there's all that stuff out there and if people want to provide liquidity that's entirely up to them but all this pump and dump nonsense and yield farming and all this crap that's going on 
A lot of it is unnecessary if you really think about what you need to make a community tight, what you need to make a project kick off, and what you need to make that project have legs and sustainability for the long term, and what you need for the balance of power for actual governance, which is all pretty easy to do if you actually sit down and do it. And then the hard thing is just balancing that that balance of power out once you have controversy and conflict later down the road for some reason which will happen and you have to plan for that and expect it and prepare for it and have a plan a b and c for when those issues arise zyba you said i'm not a shiller just sparked my interest in crypto today yeah it's fine it's they're just <laughs> they're just slinging out comments Anyway, we're probably going to need some new uh, emojis for Discord and Twitch once we kick off stream time. We're definitely going to need some, some platypus emojis. Um, let's see, is that everything? I think that's everything. So... The only thing I'm going to be doing now is, now that Snapshot's live in the registry, I'm going to add Streamtide to the registry. So, yeah, streamtide.io. Uh, let's see, we're gonna have to get GitHub. For now, I think I'm gonna add the Sessions Media GitHub. I don't actually have the proposal up, so yeah, that'll be fine. Once this is up, though, then we will be good. Yeah, okay. Um, hang on, let me pull up my profile. I'm going to go ahead and like submit this now, I think. If I have my USB and my ledger. Do I have my ledger? Where is my ledger? Uh, oh, I think I put it up for stream. Oh, there it is. Sweet. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and submit it, submit this right now, then. And then, once the Streamtide District Registry submission is live, it will be a snapshot governance portal uh, for anyone who is staking DMT to Streamtide. And anyone who's staking DNT to Streamtide will get governance rights over Streamtide whenever we have some polls, which will be pretty cool. Uh, most of the polls, I assume, are probably going to be feature requests, but I'm sure, just like Gitcoin, we'll probably need to be putting up polls to ask whether or not the community agrees that we should submit a... Uh, transaction to everyone to do the grant matching like if there was a f known fraud everyone might say no and vote no because they have some known fraud issues in there and, and we'll give people time to talk about it discover those things and all that good stuff Okay, so let's go ahead and get this going. What did I use for the blurb on Twitter? Oops, stream tide. There we go. Ah, a Web3 based crowdfunding and grants app built to address starving artist syndrome. Perfect. Good blurb. GitHub URL is going to have to be. Um, hmm. I'm just going to put my own for now.
No Facebook URL, Twitter URL. I'm going to go ahead and put that. And ENS name, uh, stream tide dot ETH. Oh, I have to actually own it? Shoot, I didn't know that. Um, okay, well, I guess I have to do that and I have to transfer the ENS name over to this address. Oh, it's not going to be on that one. Shoot. Okay. Well, I'll have to go do that later then. All right. That's fine. Okay. Well, I'll do that after I get off stream. It'll be easier anyway. Uh, my body said, could we lock our tokens as collateral uh, for a loan, I assume is what you're talking about? That would... I don't know. Um, I don't really have an intention to get the Tide token involved in DeFi so much as I do using it to approve uh, grants if I use it for anything. Um, I don't know. I might uh, like pursue that if it made sense. I don't know. It's There's a lot of legal questions and headaches and paperwork and stuff involved with doing that. Uh, but I think um, there's a lot of platforms that you could lock up your tokens as collateral, though. Uh, I think there's some that are permissionless, too. So, like, you could just go to a DeFi platform that lets you use any token that has a market value, and it would let you do that. But, I don't know. It'd probably be pretty low liquidity and probably pretty risky on the loan side of things. So, I don't know if you could or not. But, uh, I don't know. We'll see. So. No, uh, I'm actually submitting it now, Eco. Like, I've got to. Unless you're talking about snapshot on the registry, then yes, the registry does have snapshot. So any new registry submissions will be snapshot instead of Aragon now. Uh, that's, that's how it is built now because that is pretty much the industry standard for governance at the moment so yeah and when can you stake towards stream tide um that will be as soon as i finish what you're looking at on the screen right now i have to do the upload upload the logo upload the background i have to get my ens name transferred to this address and then we're good to go then we're going to kick off the ability for you to stake towards stream tide yeah, that'll be pretty cool. Um, I got to get the 10,000 DNT. Oh, yeah, I don't even have the 10,000 DNT on this address. So, yeah, I need 10K DNT, which is on the other address. I need the ENS name. And I should probably just set up a GitHub profile right now. Yeah. And then you'll be able to stake towards it and gas-free vote on proposals and even submit proposals for Streamtide if you want new feature requests or want to approve or disapprove of transactions for the grant matching as well as any other governance decisions that may arise with treasury decisions and things like that. So also because this is the first district that is going to go live outside of our initial development plans. Um, I should be getting the DNT reward. Uh, the 500k DNT will be going to the community multisig as well, which we will likely be delegating towards other districts and staking towards other districts and participating in governance as a community. So the multisig key holders will be in control of that DNT. Some snapshot polls will likely go up to help all of you decide what those of you who are staking towards Streamtide anyway, will let you decide what other districts that we might be staking towards using those tokens. And yeah, I think uh, pretty exciting. We'll get to see uh, cross-district governance kick off 
with Stream Titan. Anyway, uh, that is it for me today, everybody. Does anyone have any questions about the token launch, about the current final designs? They are solid and ready to go from what you see now that is going to be the final one we're going to go ahead and push a landing page uh uh live soon that will just have email sign up as a main option and then hopefully sometime soon probably by christmas or a little after we will see stream tide live no guarantees on that, but my goal is before February, I would love to have this pushed out, but we'll have to see how things work out. Thank you so much for the Prime sub there, Snorgy. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, but that's it. And thank you for your time, Blue Light. I really appreciate you and everyone else being, being here. So, uh, yeah, Doctor, Blue Light. Snorky, everyone, thank you so much for being here. I will see you next week for another episode of The Dap Digest. My name is Brady McKenna. And we'll see you next time. Cheers, everybody. Brady, out.